This is Will Faber from Art to Ride, and today I'm looking at a first submission by Lisa in New Zealand of her horse, Chica. Chica is a 12 or 13 year old mare of a thoroughbred type, I would say, and I think that's where your problem lies. Um, I've read all your information about the horse, and basically, we see this all the time. I grew up in Kentucky, and I have been training and retraining thoroughbreds all my life. And for instance, the reason that thoroughbreds have such a bad name is that people would go you know, and buy them after they've been on the racetrack, and they'd go into the hands of beginner riders because they sold cheap, who would immediately think that they were crazy because they'd be exploding and all the things they would be doing. They wouldn't be able to control them. And that's simply because they didn't have the skills necessary to ride a hot horse. Horses basically come in two varieties, hot ones and cold ones. All right? The hot ones feel pain more acutely. They're much more aware of their surroundings. Um, they're much more flighty because, of course, the thoroughbred horse is bred to run. So, you know, they tap into that, you know, atavistic memory of time to run away because something's after them, you know, and that's why they run in races. That's why we don't see warm bloods running in races because they're so domesticated that they don't really care, as are a lot of grade type horses, which are the kind that you would find, you know, being ridden by sort of the everyday people having in the backyard and this sort of thing being kept that way. And they sort of get to a point with training where they kind of dull out. And even though if you knew, you know, you'd know that half of them are lame and they're probably sore in their backs and, and, uh, various other places. Um, but the reality is they just kind of dull out. A horse like this, like your horse, is never going to just dull out. Um, it's gone, it's training has, I'm sure, never been consistent from reading the history of, this ho of the horse. It's never really just been trained consistently or correctly and got into the wrong hands from the very beginning and people who didn't know how to work this type of a horse. Um, so basically what I'm seeing here is I think this is a really nice type of horse. Now that was rather interesting what she was doing there in terms of grazing, but I don't think that it necessarily means anything. Um, she seems to be sound and that sort of thing and actually seems like quite an, I like the horse a lot. I mean, she has a lot of, uh, you know, uh, I wish you'd gotten her as a four-year-old and started her then, but it really doesn't matter. I explained to you in a, uh, the email that I sent you today you know, that it doesn't matter whether the horse is 12 years old, 20 years old, or 4 years old. If it's never been trained consistently and correctly, a horse like this, a hot horse, is never going to just dull out. It's just going to become erratic. And that's basically what you have, because the horse has never been trained consistently long enough for, for it to sort of, uh, you know, get in the groove of work and what it means to be a civilized human being. And so she's sort of half wild all the time <clears throat> because she's never learned consistency in her life. You know, so this is what you have to do. I see nothing wrong with this horse. In fact, I like it a lot. I think it's a really nice typey mare and, you know, and I love thoroughbreds, but I can tell by looking at her that she's never been correctly developed. And you see how her withers just sort of sticks up above both the neck and the back and how sharply that dips down right behind the withers. So this horse's back has never been developed correctly. You can see how standing there, her neck is all developed on the underside of her neck. So that tells me she's basically been pulling herself along with her shoulders most of her life. And she's never really learned to work over her top line. That is to engage her back so that she would equalize, equalize the pressure on all four legs. Same thing here. What we see here is just a very thin, there's no top line on the horse. Even though she's got meat on her, she's not skin and bones. But where is it? It's all hanging under her belly. You know, there's absolutely no top line on the horse at all. So you could expect it to take, uh, from this point forward, if you train the horse correctly, it will take you about two years to bring this horse to let it develop correctly. That is, its withers will pull up through the shoulders, its back will develop correctly, and will have meat across its back instead of just spine there. Um, so that's what we're going to want to see. And uh, I think you have a lot of potential here with this horse. Now, getting to this type of lunging, once again, this is just, you know, you'd never get anywhere training a horse like this the way you're going about it here. So if you want to get into this, what I suggest you do is watch my videos on lunging and you need to start this horse correctly and start it lunging correctly. This is where you want to start. Now, you are not lunging the horse right now. It's lunging you. You see how you are backing away from the horse? You should always have a lunge whip in your hand when you lunge. Um, otherwise, all you can do is kind of swing the rope at it and swing the end of it or get too close to the horse, which you do later on, which is dangerous. But you see, as you're lunging, here, you're backing up. The horse should be moving away from you. That's the ba first basic principle of training is the horse must learn to move away from you. 
And you must do it at the end of a lunge line that gives you safety. Uh, later on in this video, I'll point it out when you do it, but you're lunging the horse much too close to the body of the horse. I've found two people, one with her face kicked in and another with a leg broken leg, who were trying to do just what you were doing. It's way too dangerous. The point of lunging correctly on a lunge line and with a correct lunge whip that is long enough that you can work the horse, but you are not in the strike zone. You're not putting yourself in the danger zone of those hind legs which you must never forget can kill you in an instant and it happens every day to well-meaning people like yourself um, to their pet and from their pets you know horses are not you know if they kick out at a fly they don't care if you're standing there and that's what you've got to understand so once again seeing her walking here we can see basically that her hind end see how slow like molasses her back legs come up because she's basically just dragging her back end along now you talked about in your letters that you were having trouble with the horse forging a little bit and it's all part of the same problem the horse isn't working over its back it's dragging its hind legs because it doesn't know how to use its hind legs because it has no back muscles for with which to use them now, once again, you may have many friends who have these backyard horses that they go out on these, you know, two-hour, three-hour trail rides on, and they're just fine. But if you actually look at them, you'd probably find that they have, you know, saddle sore marks, and they and their feet are probably sore, but they're just dulled out. You know, if you took a horse like this in this kind of condition and took it on a two-hour trail ride, I can guarantee you that it's going to be sore for a month afterwards. There's no way. It would be like taking somebody out of a hospital bed and making them go run a marathon, you know. People assume, because horses are large, that they're big, strong animals, and we can just get up on them. But they are not at all. No matter, In fact, the bigger they are, the weaker their backs are. That's something to think about. Think about the small horses that we think of, like pack horses, are like little burros and little stout horses like... Uh, uh, the Norwegian horses and some of these kind of things that are just very small little pack horses that have little short backs and they're very broad backed and strong you know but once again so that's a horse that's meant to go very slowly and carry weight so what we want as a sport horse is something in between so we want a horse like this but the problem is that people don't understand if you do not develop their backs you're going to destroy the horse once again the back is what puts the suspension on the horse it's what puts the shock absorbers on it so once again, you see how this horse's neck comes up into the shoulder and then there's a huge bump of the withers? That's because there is no muscle on this horse's top line at all. So you shouldn't even be thinking about riding this horse for some time to come until you see that pendulous belly start to disappear and start to pull up and you see her stretching into the contact and you see the top of the neck thickening. So this walk is getting a little better as she's going here just by virtue of just walking a little better. So that's a little better than it was. I actually, once again, want to say that I think this horse has a lot of potential. I'd love to see you try to develop this horse and you know you mentioned about only having the grass field to work in there's nothing wrong with that you know before people had all these fancy arenas that we're now used to that's how people worked horses that out, out in pastures now you do have to be aware when you do that that the consistency of a pasture is always changing you know they can be very soft in the winter and very hard in the summer that's what we would have in Kentucky when I grew up you know where you could ride the horses out all winter long but when summer came two weeks later the ground was hard as a rock and if you kept riding them on that ground they'd all get sore footed well I'm sure you probably have the same situation there so you must be aware and you know work accordingly when when you have that that situation that is the ground going from soft to hard but as to working in the grass no problem i mean yes it would be better if you had a nice soft consistent ring but if you work horses correctly you can work them in all kinds of environments because that's the kind of point is you know if you work them correctly over the backs they're getting worked evenly between the four legs they get their suspension system working so just seeing this horse trotting around the same thing here you see how the lower part of her neck is pulling up this horse is basically just pulling herself along by her shoulders her back end has is almost nothing to do with how she's moving it's just see how far the horse's hind leg comes behind the body and it's still just then kind of lifting off the ground so all that kind of stuff puts a great deal of pressure it looks better as you're sending her on there I think this horse would actually come around quite quickly if you start working her correctly and consistently so once again correct work is not just okay now I'm going to jump on this horse and go on a trail ride oh and today I'm going to take it down to the beach and today I'm going to do this no it's being very consistent building upon a foundation coming out by starting lunging the horse our rule of thumb is if you can't stretch a horse into the contact at the walk, it should not be ridden. It should be lunged until it will, and then you can get on because your back muscles will be warmed up. But if you can't get the horse to stretch and you end up just in a big fight with the horse, we see so many people trying to fight horses, as you picked up on, into false frames. That's horrible as well and totally destroys the horse. So the frame will come when you get the horse working over its back correctly, all of those other issues will disappear. What will happen in two years' time, once again, see how this horse is just pulling with its shoulders, see how thick the bottom of the neck is, see how far behind its body the hind legs are. 
all of those problems that you're having about forging and all of these various things will all just take care of themselves when you take care of what is the big problem with this horse is it's untrained and it has no top line. So once again, and there she's even starting to stretch a little bit. Now, once again, you were very right. So you need to get a lunge whip in your hand. Never bend over because if you bend over, once again, that's a sign of weakness. You want to keep your upper body up straight and you want the horse to lunge into the contact and stay there. That's why you have to have a lunge whip. So you want the horse to move out into the contact with that line, even if it's only with a halter, and take that slack up and stay there consistently. So all this bending over that you're doing and all this stuff is just not, it has no effect on the horse whatsoever. It's just not doing anything. You're just, you know, <laughs> Um, it's just not going to work. It's not going to help you in any way. So once again, I want you to watch the videos that we have about starting horses and side reins. That's where this horse needs to go. She might need to be in a sham bone if she's, but I don't think so. I think this horse will just, if you just work this horse correctly. So that's what we need to do is go back and get her on the lunge line, get you with a lunge whip in your hand, teach the horse to move away. Lunging is just like riding. The whip is your leg and the rein is your rein. So we want the horse to move into the outside rein. So, so as you talk about in my videos, when you see about lunging when lunging is correct the inside rein will be loose that's why if you see anybody ever tells you tighten the inside rein to help the horse bend you know instantly that they don't know what they're talking about because when a horse is bent correctly and it can only bend correctly that is side to side when its back comes up you also mentioned doing these standing still and twisting the neck from side to side these exercises they're totally ridiculous they do absolutely nothing everything you do standing still will have no value whatsoever to the horse you, ha you have to be doing something and you never the cardinal rule of classical dressage is the neck should never be out of line with the rest of the spine as soon as just like if you tried to play the piano and forced your hands down over onto your wrist you wouldn't be able to play because you couldn't use your fingers from in other words the movement has to initiate from the shoulder same thing as true of a horse so and the same thing happens if you put too tight a side reins these kind of things that we see people trying to force it into the frame it ruins the movement so remember that position is never at the expense of movement or you have nothing whatsoever so once again I want you to go back watch the videos on our site about lunging and I want you to get the equipment on the horse I would suggest that instead of a saddle that you just get yourself a lunging sur single and start because just in case this horse is reactive and you tell me all the things that she does you don't want to have your good saddle on there just in case she decides to be silly with it on her. So get yourself a cheap lunging sur single, you know, put some pads underneath it so it doesn't cut into the horse's back, of course, like just usually one saddle pad will be fine. And it doesn't have to be an expensive lunging sur single, just one of these ones that's, you know, made out of the nylon type material and that sort of thing. You can buy one of those for 30 or $40 off of any horse catalog anywhere in the world. But just be sure and put a saddle pad underneath it so that, you know, and just go through the, the loops on your saddle pad. So once again, what I'm seeing here is a really nice horse. This is just, to me, an untrained 12-year-old horse who's moving very badly because she doesn't know any difference. I don't see anything soundlessly wrong with the horse. I think just what your vet told you. I don't think there's anything wrong with this horse other than the fact that it isn't trained. Um, there's plenty of horses going around that are way lamer than this one, and I'm not really seeing any lameness here at all, so I'm not seeing any problems whatsoever. And I have watched this whole video, of course, before I'm commenting on it, so I know where we're going. I've looked at the horse's feet and that sort of thing, and I'm not seeing anything that's a big problem for me and she's really quite a nice mover she just isn't moving through her back right and no horse is ever going to be comfortable with a saddle on its back once again a sensitive type horse once again you may have plenty of friends who have these horses that they ride them once a week and they throw on a saddle and go on a three-hour trail ride you know they just don't know any better but I guarantee you every time they do that the horse is sore for days they're just not aware of it they probably throw it back out in the pasture and they don't see it again until the next time they ride it that's often the case but if you work them every day you know, a horse, if you're going to make uh, progress with a horse, it needs to really be worked five days a week. Well, that's how I do it. A minimum of three days. Any less than three days and you'll never put any muscle on the horse. So put that in your mind. You want to get this into a five-day thing. And then you want to simply work the horse in in through each success. So what you now have to do is go back to the very beginning with this horse and forget all this leaning over like you're doing and see that's exactly what happens. The horse sees that you have no real control. You have no whip. So it just flips around and does whatever you want. And this idea of flipping around that some of the Western people teach their horse is totally ridiculous because you don't want the horse to flip around and come at you. You want to stay consistently in the gate. And while I have a lot of respect for the people who do natural horsemanship, what many of them don't know anything about is how horses actually are supposed to move. So it's all about getting their horse calm and they can ride them in this sort of things, but I don't see any Grand Prix dressage horses, any good ones being made in this manner because 
they don't really you know take into consideration the mechanics of the horse it's simply whether the horse is calm whether it does this or that like what you're doing right there is so dangerous and such a great way to get yourself kicked in the head that horse was way too close to you you let it walk away from you on the lunge line and it could have easily just kicked out and got you right in the face so that's what you want to do you want to get the horse out on a big circle but you want to whip in your hand so you can send it out so the same thing here this horse is more lunging you than you're lunging it you know, and this thing, you've got to get yourself straightened out. The horse will look at you as something very weak when you lean over the way you're leaning over there. It will have absolutely no positive effect on the horse at all, but make the horse think that, you know, you're something it can overpower, which we never want to let them know. So, once again, you're going to go back to my videos. You're going to get a surcingle for the horse and start lunging it just in loose side reins the way I show there. Once again, with a whip in your hand, you know, and you can either lunge it um, in the beginning if you have a cavison you can use that or you can just lunge off of the bit by going if the horse is difficult you can put it over the top of their head you know that you go through the ring on one side and up the other side to the other side if you don't have a search angle that's often a good way to do it and it's a good way to do it if horses have become difficult like this one has obviously that's not a difficult for running off with you but she's obviously learned this little trick i mean she has no respect for you here whatsoever and that's quite clear she's just playing around with you and you're kind of playing around with it but if it came control of something spooked this horse right now you wouldn't be able to do anything about it it would be long gone and that's kind of what you've done you have a horse that isn't really trained so it goes along kind of okay as long as it's okay with what you're doing but as soon as it doesn't like what you're doing it just throws a fit and throws a tantrum and gets its own way and it probably has for years and years so it's going to continue doing that till you get a little tougher in terms of making the horse work so you can't just let a horse stop whenever it feels like stopping you know that will and come to you that's just a bad habit in other words it's taking over control you must never let the horse take control from you and that's basically what you've done here and once again even seeing like I like everything about this horse. It's a pretty good mover and uh, quite a nice. And you would be surprised. This will be one of those horses that if you do this work correctly and you get this horse working over its back, this could be a very nice dressage horse. But once again, it takes two years for that change to happen in the horse where through the stretching work, the withers pull up through the shoulders and the back develops. And now you have something that you can sit on and uh, it can carry you for a long distance. Uh, you also asked me about saddles. Absolutely bareback is the worst way and the worst thing you can ever do to your horse's back because it puts the pressure directly on the spine. Now if you were a good enough rider that you could close your thighs and were strong enough and you could keep yourself up on your thighs, in other words do what a saddle does which is displace your weight down the sides of the horse, this is rib cage, you could do that but that's not what I see people doing. They go out there and they drop, you know, they're just literally, they're, uh, you know, um, a ton of lead on top of the horse sitting right through its spine so yes whoever told you that a saddle is correct yes is correct because that's what a saddle does is distribute your weight off of the horse's spine and that's what you want to do so you're going to lunge him in a circle circle and then later on we'll go back to putting the saddle on if you want to stick with this program but once again you can see how pendulous the horse's sides are you know when you see a horse is working correctly the horse pulls up through those abdominal wall as well as pulls its back up you know, so this horse, you think of it, it's almost like a broodmare and you've had it off for so long and off and on that it, you really just have to start all over again and just know that it can be done. You know, it's not an old horse. And as I said, I'm not seeing anything wrong with the horse other than the way it is mechanically moving. You know, so when you solve those problems, it will be fine. Now, if you want a horse that, you know, you can just pull out and leave it in there and ride it two times a week and go out on the beach with your buddies and pals, you know, by all means, get yourself one. This is not one that will go that way. You're going to end up getting yourself hurt if you continue with a horse like this. I've seen it too many times because thoroughbreds that you can't depend on, as you've described, this horse will just go crazy and run over you or jump off a cliff with you or jump you in front of a car or some kind of things like that because they've learned that kind of crazy action to get what they want, which is their way. So, you know, you've got two years of work to get this horse consistent to get out of that mode that you know, once again, if something goes wrong, you can still count on your control. And that's what you can't count on. Because if something goes wrong, this horse is just going to blow you off, so to speak, and do what it feels like doing. So a nice moving horse. I think this horse has lots of potential. All you need Now, this is what I'm talking about. What you're doing right here should never, ever be done. That is the best way in the world to get yourself kicked in the kneecap, get yourself kicked in the face. Um, 
it's just not ever what you wanted to do. And I know some of these natural horsemanship people are teaching people this, and uh, I, it is just the most ridiculous thing in the world. I said, I have personally found two people seriously, one near death, who were doing just what you're doing. You know, you've got to work out of the horse's strike zone. And this little thing of having a six-foot line on the horse and spinning it, not only that, you're spinning the horse off of its legs. That's way too small of a circle for the horse to be doing. You know, only a very advanced dressage horse that's been collected for years can do an eight meter circle. You're asking this horse to spin around you in a six meter circle or five meter circle. What could it possibly do but lose the rhythm? And that's all you're doing here. You never get, remember, you know, it's just like you when you go to the gym. If you just go to the gym and pick up one weight and set it down, walk over and slump your shoulders and pick up another one for five minutes, that's what you're doing with this horse. It's all just random. You're not doing anything consistently enough to have anything happen. And once again, I'm not seeing anything, you know, once again, I think what you have here is a pretty nice horse to work with. I'm not seeing any major problems. It doesn't surprise me that she walked off when you poked her there. That's her loin. But she didn't react like she hurt there. Um, so I'm not seeing any major problems other than you just got a big green horse that's 13 or 14 years old and it's never really done anything, you know. And that's not, the way you're going about that, that's not overly, overly sensitive, I wouldn't say there. Um... You want to take your hand along next time, right along the spine, right along the edge of the spine where you can feel the muscle. I suggest you watch my wife's videos also on uh, saddle fit and uh, so that you can get a better idea. She'll show you some of these points, where they are and that sort of thing. So I highly recommend you, if you haven't, you go and watch that video. She seems a little, but you know, mares can be a little bit like that, you know, anyway, and especially sensitive thoroughbred type mares. So. You know, uh, I'm not seeing anything there that's going, oh, this horse just looks like it's in horrible, horrible pain. Um, as I said, what I'm seeing here is just a totally undeveloped, you know, you see how her neck just, there's, there's just no muscle. When you go back, you know, beyond to the left of where your hand is there, it just falls away to nothing. And you see how there's a big, thick muscle on the underside of the neck. Once again, that tells you that the horse has never carried itself correctly. Now, you know, you once again, you may have lots of friends who go have these horses that they keep and they go and they take them on these long rides and this sort of thing and they get by with it, but they're not asking much of the horse, you know, and those kind of horses. There's plenty of horses in the world who will just dull out and they'll go along with that kind of work and this sort of thing. A sensitive horse like this one and a powerful one, you know, they're going to very quickly find out who's going to be uh, the boss, so to speak. And then they're just going to play that little freaky game every time that they don't want to do something. They just turn into lunatics because it's what has gotten them where they, you know, gotten their way for them before. I'm working the horse that you see, Bailador, was an extreme case of the exact same thing that you're dealing with him. And I'm going on a, it's a year and a half now. It's taken me to get him to connect over his top line. So don't think this is not going to be a work. And don't think that you're going to be riding this horse six weeks from now and going on, you know, 10 mile gallops that ain't going to happen you know you need to put two years of solid foundation work into this horse in order to order to make it into something or get your something that self that's something that's just safe uh, as far as the feet go i think the shoeing looks quite good and the feet look in good shape once again i'm not seeing anything about this horse that worries me in the least i thought the horse was plenty sound enough once again it's just mechanically not moving correctly so all those things that you tell me about dragging his hind leg hitting its legs together all these things are signs of weakness. Those are all because the horse is weak across its back. So what happens is a, a weak-backed horse can't get its front legs out of the way of its back legs. So it starts to move, and it hasn't got enough strength to lift the front end up out of the way so that the leg can, can come through. And this is a big moving horse. This horse has potential for dressage. It's really a very nice moving horse. And when you get it moving over its back, it could be really something spectacular. But once again, that's going to take you two years of work. Same thing here, you know, not seeing all these feet look pretty good. It looks like a pretty good shoe job as well. Um, I see worse jobs over here all the time. So uh, that's not bad at all. I'm not seeing anything there that worries me in the least. She's quite a nice substantial character, as I like to say. But like many thoroughbreds, you know, she got into the hands of people. No one ever got her quite completely trained. So, you know, you have a horse that's not really dependable because if something goes wrong, you can never depend on what you're going to get because it, its foundation isn't there. So anything that goes above its threshold of spookiness or whatever, it's going to go completely out of its mind. And now you have a horse that can't do anything again. Um, I, I did think here, looking at these shoes, just be very careful that those bars are awfully close to that frog. And I, I can't see for sure. So just be very sure that there's no pressure at the point there, at the, at the bottom of the shoe there, that as the opening, so to speak, there. Just be careful that, that those bars don't hit that frog. But they don't look like they do. It looks pretty good. 
Um, got a little cracking back there. I don't think that looks like anything too much to worry about. Um, I would ask you whether she's had some abscesses, which horses and pastures often do. Uh, but, you know, her feet look like they're pretty good shape. She's got a nice big frog on there, and uh, your shoe job looks pretty good. Now, once again, now this one on this side, I, I would be kind of a little suspicious of how on the right side there, you see how that that uh, shoe comes around and onto the frog. So just be sure that there's no pressure on a point there under that frog, that that shoe point is not hitting. I would have, I would have spread that a little more myself. Um, and talk to your shoer about that to try to spread the heels out. And I'm sure your veterinarians talk to you about that a bit. But uh, I'd like to see a little more spread on that, just a little bit possibly. But, you know, once again, talk to a real shoer. I'm giving you some ideas from my point. And once again, I highly recommend Mike uh, Leonardo, um, Leonardo, and we'll give you his uh, address. And he has a good website, and you can go right there and submit videos and all that kind of thing if you want an opinion from him. So anyway, all this looks pretty good. The horse looks good, and everything that I read just basically tells me the story that I'm telling you. Basically, you just have an untrained horse that's a hot horse. Now, this kind of stuff, too, I did want to talk a little bit about this stuff, about the horse and the horse uh, being so hung up on the other horses. The only way you're going to solve that with a horse like this, I don't know if you've ever seen in Kentucky Horse Farm, but the fences are always double fenced, so the horses can't touch noses. And, you know, the only way you will other break this horse of, of this obsession with other horses is, is to, you know, it's just like a mare. You have to wean her from the other horse. It's as simple as that. And as long as you keep her out in the pasture with that horse, it's going to, you know, it's going to do just what it's doing. Go crazy every time you take it away from it because it's like a mare with a foal. So it's kind of a replacement foal. So what you really need to do is develop your fence line there that has a double fence line or something that this horse can't touch noses with the other horse. It's fine for them to see each other. They just can't touch noses. If they can touch noses, they're going to fall in love. That's this kind of horse. So the only way you will solve that is by separating them, but not visually. They can see each other, but you must have enough separation between the fences that they can't touch noses between the fences. Then they will get over all this. But if you don't, they will just go on doing just this. There's, only, there's really no other cure for this. Now, your training will help this in that as you get her more consistent in training and her training becomes more um, reliable, so to speak, you know, you might be able to get away with it. It might improve. But the only real way, and this kind of running around in a pasture, you should never want the horse to do. This is the best way in the world to break a horse's leg and all that slamming on the brakes that they do. I mean, what we do as soon as our horses start running like this, we bring them in because we don't want them running like that. Because they, I mean, if you ask any veterinarian, of course, you live in a country where most people do, and you can see right there, she hit something and, and bobbled for a minute that hurt her leg. You know, you're just asking for the horse to kill itself. I mean, you know, horses and pastures should be being pretty quiet. And uh, if they're running around, especially if they're running back and forth on a fence line where they're slamming on the brakes and spinning back like a Western horse doing sliding stops, you know, and, you know, once again, that's the thing, you know, that kind of stuff just destroys horses' legs, you know. Great, people can do it, but, you know, if you, you look at the statistics, you know, most reining horses are lame. They, they last for two years and they're finished because, A, the people don't train them well enough to begin with, and then all they're doing, you know, it's like a good jumper trainer. A good jumper trainer doesn't jump very much. They work on the flat and occasionally jump. A bad jumper trainer jumps and jumps and jumps and jumps and jumps. Well, the same thing is true of people who do Western horses. You know, it's like, you know... When horses were really used for work, they didn't do sliding stops every day. They might do it for a few days during roundup, but then they don't do it again for months. So it's not like you know they are in the show world now, where horses are expected to go out and perform these things day in and after day out, you know, and uh, do the same things and keep doing those those abusive movements, you know. So I would highly recommend that you get this horse, you know, in into a smaller pasture, you know, get her separated from the other horse, let her see her, maybe just put a separate fence there so she can see the horse, but she can't touch noses with it. And in a little time, they will forget about each other. But that's the only way you're going to get rid of that problem. And this kind of running around in a pasture, you should never encourage and should never do, because this is the best way in the world. I can't tell you in my 55 years in the horse business how many horses I've seen with broken legs and necks even doing just what this one is doing right now. You know, and watch how she comes down the fence and slams on the brakes, you know, and this kind of stuff. I mean, this is just so hard on the horse's legs. And to take a horse that, you know, this horse is not, 
She's doing this because she's excited and out of her mind. And people think, oh, well, and even you said, oh, she doesn't look sound when she's like this. So of course not, because her mind is so in a frazzle that she's not even feeling anything. That's why we see third base of the track who will run to their legs break, you know, because and they'll try to keep running because they're not even feeling it because the mind is overwritten all of that. You know, so we want to really dissuade this kind of stuff, you know. Um, I would put this horse in a much smaller pasture where it's much more confined, where it can't run around like a lunatic. As I said, I would separate the pasture. So, well, this is more like it here, but you only have single lines. If the horses, once again, they need to be separated to a point where they can't touch noses, you know. And maybe even this is a horse that you want to keep up in a barn, you know, and sometimes that or in a smaller paddock, you know, and turn them out in the day or something and bring them back in at night or something like that. But you don't want this kind of running around. This kind of this horse this is way too much space. This horse is going way out of its mind and you'll you will never keep a horse sound for any kind of real work letting them run around like this. And as you said, your other ones don't do it. Well it's different kind of horse. This is a very hot horse who you know you just you have to treat them differently. You know, and that's why most people don't ride thoroughbreds anymore because they are too difficult for most people and even most so-called trainers. And you put them in the hands of the Western people, you know, and they just become basket cases because they won't put up with the kind of stuff that these Western horses will put up with. They're duller kinds of horses. You know, so you must treat them, you know, they're special children, so to speak, and we must treat them differently. So I hope all this helps. I thoroughly enjoyed reading all your information on the horse. I would love to see you try this and see if you can't get somewhere with the horse. Once again, I'd like to see you go back to the lunging start correctly with the lunging each day and what you want to do with the lunging is just get the horse till she as soon as you see her start to stretch into the contact but keep her there consistently consistently never let the horse spin if she does spin when you finally stop just keep dissuading that from happening send the horse on until she stops doing that thing of jamming on the brakes and turning to you that's something you never want to have happen it has absolutely no value it's just lazy horse training so you don't have to go walk up and change directions um, it's just not good so anyway side reins on the horse get a surcingle get her started lunging short periods of time that's where you need to start I'll be happy to watch the videos for you but you need to go back to the very beginning and train this horse all over again and the good news is if you do I think you're gonna have a fantastic horse but know that it will take you two years of consistent work to put that foundation on the horse. Once again, it doesn't matter whether they're two or they're 14. If they've never been trained correctly, this is what it will take. And since the horse has learned all these habits, it may, you know, it may be something you may be still dealing with some of these habits as the time goes on. As I said, the horse Bailador, look at him. You know, he's very similar to this one. All right, this is Will Favor from Archer Ride. It's been lovely uh, learning about your horse and you, and I look forward to seeing more from you very soon.